Hello, my name is Dr. Scott Young, and today we're going to do the third of our, our Miracle Healing video here, and it's on that Tuesday. Coming right up. If you haven't watched the first two, you got to go back and watch them, okay? I, I'm not going to share with you everything that's happening. On Monday night, I was starting to get better. And my wife was saying, you know, kept calling the hospital every four hours. Is he doing okay? And the nurse would say, yeah, he's my easiest patient on the ICU floor. She goes, were you in the right room? And I, I remember I woke up on that Tuesday and I... You know, I was talking to the nurse and he looks at me, he goes, what do you want for breakfast? He's testing me. I didn't realize that at the moment. I pick up the menu and I see a couple things circled and I didn't realize Wendy had circled those because those would be what I would want to eat and circles those areas. And I said, well, whatever circle looks good to me. Looks out, walks out the room thinking, who is this guy? The PT comes in, physical therapist. She had already seen me a few times before that moment in time on Tuesday, the 24th. And she walks in going, what's going on? She walks me down the hallway. I walk up a stair and down the stairs. It's just a couple, you know, uh, basically occupational therapy kind of points that you want to do on a potential stroke victim. And, you know, the, she looks at me and goes, I don't know. You look okay to me. The neurologist walks in and as he's talking a little bit later on, uh, he's asking me a few questions and I'm answering all this, which is another type of diagnostic kind of point. And he's, he mumbles out, you know, uh, uh, unspecified encephalopathy. And, and that is a very basic definition because by that point in time, there were 40 pages of diagnostics and $142,000, I found out later, $142,000 of tests and every single one of them came up negative. And, and this was, I, I believe this was a very strong spiritual attack that was happening in me. And, and they had no answers. And that, that diagnosis is the only way that they got paid on the, on the, the, uh, the hospital visit. But as he leans out, he, he walks away, he shakes my hand, he says, I don't know, you look okay to me? Then the ICU physicians come in. Now the res, I mean, the, uh, the intern walks in and he's looking at me like, I cannot believe this. The resident, she's got a little more snowed look, but she's kind of confused in the face. Now that the attending walks in and he, you know, kind of has this viewpoint of I've got it under control, but none of them have ever seen anything like it. They had sent down 15 physicians to check in on this guy that was doing these crazy things, not making any sense. And as I'm talking to them and just answering a few of their questions, and I, one of the things that I remember saying, and I'm, I'm about 70% there at that time frame on the 24th. And uh, I remember saying, uh, when am I going to get out of here? And he goes, well, we don't really release from an ICU. And I said, dude, you always release. You put down to a step unit, step down unit instead of an ICU. He kind of, you know, shrugs his shoulders with that too. But within a few hours, I'm walking out of that hospital. As I get back to the hotel, we're in a different hotel room because my wife and son did not want to be in the, the other hotel. And they're still freaking out and, and processing this problem. My son later on would, would talk to me when they kind of, when I was moving a little bit too fast for them weeks down the road, they kind of said, hey, listen, we all need to get some healing on this. And we all went through counseling because it was a lot of stuff that was happening. I mean, I had a lot of, uh, a lot of guilt uh, conscience over, you know, me living and other people not being alive right now. I mean, it was a really big guilt trip that I was going through as well. But 
You know, my son actually said a, a startling point that most people don't understand. He said, it would have been easier for you to die than for you to go toward death and then bounce right back. Now, some people would say, that's, that's rude. No, it's not. Because when you see someone that goes from healthy to unhealthy, you expect the next point is death. And, but it, it totally rocked his world to watch that healing event happen. And, and, and that was a par- perfect point of what was occurring. As I got back to the hotel, I remember um, calling up, and, I, and if you remember the last video, there's people that operate in fear and anxiety over this. And there are other people who operate in the chara level joy. That's the Greek word for, for joy. Now, the first people that called up are um, Eric and Beth Ann. And these two, this couple has dealt with a, a baby that died of SIDS. And on top of that, about 10 years later, and they have another child, uh, well, a little longer than that. But, you know, she's, she's 10 years old. And this, this baby, I mean, this little kid is on the bottom of the pool and is severely impaired. And this is, and they, they launched into ministry. There's a very strong faith that happens. And I call them up and they were just joyful. That's all they wanted to be is just joyful with me. And I really, it just energized me. So I'm thinking that's exactly what's going to happen when I call up my, my mom and my younger sister. And I tell them about it. And they they're have trepidation all over their voice. And they're, they're asking the questions that I'd, I would have literally dozens and dozens of times. Don't you want to know what's happened? Now, later on, people would ask about, was it COVID? Stop. But, you know, they would ask all these questions. Don't you want to know? He could come back. This would, and, and it was so much because at that point in time, <clears throat> I had had a lumbar puncture. Now, lumbar puncture is where they get into the spinal column and they're pulling out the CSF fluid. And that CFS, CSF fluid is to diagnose exactly what the problem is. So that CSF, you know, gave them some understanding. But again, $142,000 of tests, 40 pages, come back completely negative. When 15 physicians all over the hospital checked in on me and 100 other physician, physicians on Monday had been uh, emailed all my data so they could figure out what is wrong with this guy. This was a spiritual issue. And my mom and my sister This is not against them because this is a very common response. They didn't have trust. It's very common. And so they they overwhelmed me at that moment. I finally had to give the phone over to my wife. And she kind of explained some things that they really, it took them a long time to figure out why, why this was happening. It's because they don't trust in the Lord. And there's a lot of people just exactly like that. And when the world went into COVID years, I mean, well, months later, that same struggle came out for people. They were struggling on, you know, my health is is <clears throat> a potential loss and I'm going to die. And so we have people that, that, that operate in a lack of faith because their hope is destroyed. And one of the things that I started to understand is that... Um, One of the things I realized is a verse that I never took as seriously as I do now. It says, to live as Christ, to die as gain. What Paul was saying, who had been on the edge of his own near-death experience, when he had probably near-death experience maybe twice, is, and I was in my own near-death experience, and what it did is it just brought me to a place of, hey, listen, It's okay if I die, I could die tomorrow. I'm not worried about it because the next step is good. And when you operate in that level, there's nothing that the world can do. How do you get to that kind of level? If your hope is in the world and what happens to that, that's your expectation. And you're in in a mess if you do that because the world around you in 2020 and 2021 is just getting worse and worse. And if you listen to the people that that push out, I call it 
forgive me if I'm going to say this, fear porn. Fear porn. That's the media and social media and friends and family that tell you all the bad things. And what happens is it dampens your hope. Now, hope is something that we walk into a game, okay? Whether it's OU football here in, in Oklahoma, okay? Big thing in Oklahoma. I'm not an OU fan. Sorry. Apologize if you're if you are, but uh, the reality is, is that when people watch it, they're so intense in there in the game, and then they're really upset if their team loses. It's because they have a hope of that moment. See, that's that is a time frame of the now. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for and the promise of things unseen. It's a focus of the future and an understanding of what can happen for down the road. So the reality is, when we have faith, it is based upon the evidences. God brought me to a such amazing time as this, where we're going to see the witness, the punishment of the wicked, where we see uh, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous, that the wicked, and I don't have this verse exactly in my head, but the wicked um, collect, uh, you, you know, a usury uh, interest, which is exactly what the Fed does. And it's saved for the person who is kind to the poor. There are these verses that don't make any sense for exactly of, uh, that people have, have looked at for years and years and years, and they've never understood it. Neither have I. And they would claim it. That's the name it and claim it crowds that would push this thing forward. And then some people will say, well, that's, that's a verse for the end times. And the answer is no. It has nothing to do with the end times. Because you're not going to see the punishment of the wicked. You're not going to take away the wicked uh, who is, who's going to be taking from you or the people that are here at that time frame. Because I believe we're, in the, we're the bride of Christ. We're going to be fulfilling another role with Jesus. But the reality is, whether you agree with that or not, these are not verses that, are, that could ever happen in the end time issues. And now I walk in that, that faith expectation, that faith of I've already seen great things happen. Belief is that is a backward glance of what already occurred. And that drives me every single day. And that's what pushes out what we're doing in the ministry. And so when you are walking through this, this, this cloud of all the crud that's going on around you, you struggling with this idea that God's not doing anything. It's just all going to heck in a handbasket. I just say, calm down and trust in the joy of the future. Because I'm telling you, Nisara is coming. I know and see the evidences. There are so much evidence for, for November 3rd, uh, January 6th, and January 20th, and all the dates beyond that time frame. There's so much more evidence of that issue. And you can't trust that as a believer in Christ. But, you, but Paul would say, if you can't trust the death and resurrection of Christ, we should be pitied among all men. My response is, if you, if you believe that, and you can't believe the massive amount of evidence over here, I'm like, what are you doing? Now, I know you might be thinking I'm, I'm getting after you here. I am. I am because I've been through something that is fantastic and unbelievable. Most people, when they hear this thing, if they don't know me, they think I'm crazy. They go, they're just waiting for the other shoe to drop. The other people that know me, they kind of, when they hear the story, they just, again, I've been through a near-death experience. I've talked to so many people. I would love one person to come forward and tell me that they've been through what I've been through. It's not the most fun thing in the world. It's actually very difficult to be in a, a situation that no one really I know of, I haven't met anyone who's experienced what I've experienced. There's a couple of people who are kind of close, but you know, they had a they had a physical point 
of, of near-death experience, and they were healed from that. There, there wasn't anything out there because there were, there were a bunch of symptoms, but they couldn't diagnose them. And yet, I don't worry about that stuff. And that's what I would say to you too. Why are you worried about these crazy things that are going on around you? Because Jesus has already got it figured out. He's not sitting up in heaven freaking out. Why are you? So I just leave that with you here. And as you watch the three videos here, share this with your friends. And I appreciate you listening in. Thank you so much. <laughs>